um, 10 minutes uh, before a second airplane heading south at at 420 kilometers per hour passes the same point. What uh, what time <laughs> is there a uh, distance at a minimum? Three okay. thirty later, sorry. Is that zero point five? Over zero point five. What? Owen Sound. Over Owen Sound. Oh, Owen Sound. Okay. Um, what is the minimum distance? Okay, every, I'm not here to uh, to um, be difficult with you guys. Every part <coughs> I give you guys will either be on your test or on your final exam. Okay, these style of questions. All right, I'm not here. These optimization questions can be tricky. All right, this is a totally different style from what we've done. So if I want to take the next 20 minutes if possible to go through this one to make sure that we're good. Let me make sure I read it out that it makes sense. It's an airplane flying east to 300 kilometers per hour passes over Owen Sound. That's supposed to say. 10 minutes before a second airplane heading south at 420 kilometers per hour past the same point. Which means that one's heading this way, and then half 10 minutes later, another one passes the same point. Okay, so it's heading this way then. A, at what time is their distance at a minimum? B, what is the minimum distance? <coughs> All right, are we ready? Can you go 300 kilometers, or are you doing this ourselves? No, I'm, I'm going to. I'm doing this. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Solution. Um, so, the first airplane is flying 300 kilometers per hour east. Okay? So, we're going to say my first airplane here is going 300 kilometers per hour. That's my first airplane. My second airplane is going... Put my marker go. Let's see Mark, there we go. He's going 420. He's going 420 hours kilometers south. Okay. At time equals zero. At t equals zero, my first airplane is right there. How would I figure out? Are you guys, please. How would I figure out what the distance is for the other airplane? How far away is the other airplane going to be initially? No, because it's not one hour. Hey, please do this. Right. Okay, because you're there for ten minutes, right? So the distance they're initially going to be at time zero is going to be four twenty divided by six, which is seventy kilometers away. So we're going to get the logic there for that. So at time zero, the first plane, because it's 10 minutes, right? Okay, so instead of going for the entire hour, which would be 420 kilometers, um, you're only you're 70 kilometers away for 10 minutes. Are you okay on that logic before I continue? Okay. Um, we're going to say here, let t equals time. We're going to say let D equals your distance apart. All right, so this is what's going to be. What, what speed for the blue airplane? What can we call there an equation for the blue airplanes? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. So 400, yeah, so 420 kilometers. Um, in 60 minutes, right? That's how far they travel, right? So then to get to, right? So how many kilometers in 10 minutes? Oh. There's no divide by set, right? Okay. No? 
Wait. So it travels no? 420 okay. kilometers in 60 minutes. And then What's your ratio then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll go back to ratio then. Is that more sense for it? Okay. You better see that, sir. The same idea though, right? So 420 over 60 minutes over time. <coughs> Okay, so let's get an equation for um, the airplane going south. What can we call, if he's traveling at 420 kilometers per hour, and T is going to be time, we'll do time that we'll call hours, okay? Um, what's an equation for, or what's, how, what's an equation, an expression for the plane traveling south? What would we call that then? Uh oh. Okay, so if T is time, and they travel 420 kilometers per hour, what would the expression be for that? No, we use T in hours, we use T equals time, we'll say in hours. Negative 70 plus. That's exactly what it's going to be, but I'm going to start easier than that. Can we at least just go as 420 T? Can we say that? Okay, so he's heading down in that direction. But. The other airplane is going to be going this way. Can we please do this, guys? Okay. Like, if you don't want to be here, don't want to screw around. But seriously, I'm not going to work out to him. He has to talk in the hallway out in the 600. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be 300T going this way. Now, um, you had it exactly... You had exactly right what you were saying there, Derek, okay? Because you have to include that. So your initial, what is actually happening for this guy, it's going to be 70 minus 420 feet. Because you're starting 70 kilometers away, okay, and you're decreasing at a rate of 420 kilometers per hour. Where's the, what's the distance between them going to be? Well, if he's starting, if you take a look, right, you're going to start from here to here. And as we go, this plane's going to be going to the right. This plane's going to be going downwards, right? So you're exactly right. I heard somebody say it's going to be the hypothesis, and that's what we're going to be finding here. That's going to be your distance right there, okay? Now, before you just all blindly say, yes, I understand, I want to make sure we get thinking about this one, because no one's thought, every other year, people have thought about that 70 minus 420 thing. Okay, the whole idea is at time 20, so at time zero, you're 70 kilometers away. The, the distance will be decreasing, that's why it's minus 420, because you're getting closer to zero. Okay, does that make sense for that? I see one person with a special case, and that's good, because, no, no, seriously, Tanner, that's good, because most people people have a fight over this every year, no one's fighting this year. Why? Why is it like that? Well, they, that's good, that's good, because they're thinking at time zero, right, you're 70 kilometers away, right? So when t equals zero, your distance is going to be 70 there. Because that's 70 because of because of your 70 over here. Yeah. And then the idea was you're heading 420 this way, so you're decreasing the distance away each minute, right, by 420 kilometers per hour. Right? So you're getting closer to zero. 70 is starting here, and you're going closer to zero. When they get down to here, this is going to be zero. Right? So the distance that you're further is going to be decreasing. But well, why isn't it 420t minus 70? Because that would be. Because that would be like your negative because they're heading south though, right? You're starting because you're starting 70 away from your distance. So the 70s are starting down furthest away. I'm sure you could probably get away with that and get a similar answer. But you're thinking you're thinking as the distance is a positive distance you're away, you're getting closer to zero. Okay. Can I have that? Okay, can you just get seventy minus four twenty? Yeah, so this is so I'll just write it up here. So seventy minus four twenty T. Just go back to grade nine here again, not to insult you guys, okay? This is like your initial value, right? So at time zero, you're 70 kilometers away, and this is your rate of change. So this is your, which is your speed, right? So you're getting 420 kilometers per hour closer to zero every hour. Okay, so you're starting 70 away, you're getting 420 kilometers closer to zero. Okay, before I continue, any other questions? I'm sure I'm running low on time here. Minutes? 
Thank you for that. How do I find D? What's that? Trig? Uh, not quite trig yet. We'll get to trig next week. Something easier than trig. Pythagorean theorem we're going to use for this, okay? So we're going to say D squared equals 70 minus 420 squared uh, plus 300T squared. So D squared equals, oh boy, 4,900 minus, oh, I can't do this in my head, 28. 29, 40 times 2 is 58, 80, is that right? Oh, I can't do that in my head. I think there's an extra zero on the 580. Oh, which one? The 580. I think there's a double zero on that. 580, zero, zero, possible. If you guys can calculate that for me, I'm doing this in my head. I should grab my paper, it'll be quicker. No, that should be two. I'm just using my uh, Okay, I'll pull it out for real. Hold on a sec, I'll pull it out for real. Okay, I'll pull it out for real. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, I'll pull it out for real. Okay, so I'm just going to foil that out, okay? So that should be then, I can't do this in my head. Can somebody please it's, help It's uh, 4,900 yeah. minus uh, 58,800 T yeah. plus 176,400 uh, uh, plus... Whoa. Yeah. 176,400? Yeah. And then uh, 90,000 T squared. Okay. So D squared then equals, oh my goodness, 266400. Okay. I will show you how to do this easier, but what's the final step? This part? This here? That should be 420 times 420. It should be. Okay, next step here. So go ahead, Tom. And where's the. Because this is 90,000, right? Because 300 times 300 is 90,000. Okay. Okay, so then D is equal to one. D is equal to the square root of that. Do you think this can be foiled? Can be factors? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure you can take out a hundred or something, but let's. We'll just do it like this, okay? Now, what is this question reek of right now other than awfulness? I don't have to do this one. Hey, this is totally a big chain rule question, right? Now, before you say, oh no, I hate chain rule, this isn't going to be that bad. Because if you remember, what is, what are we always, opt when we're optimizing, what is, what are we taking? What are we, equation we solve when we optimize? Yes, but I'm wanting even simpler than that. If you have f of x as your function, when you optimize something, what are you solving? Uh, derivative. Derivative equals zero, okay? Which means the denominator of this isn't going to matter at all. Okay, right? All we need is the numerator, and we're going to set it equal to zero, all right? And we're solving for t. We're solving for t here, okay? So when I solve that, when I do this, I'm going to have d prime equals one half, two, six, six, four, zero. Oh, zero t squared minus five eight eight zero zero t plus forty nine hundred to the negative one half uh, times oh boy five three 
2800T minus 58800. Does that make sense what I did there? I hope. Okay. So I'm going to solve them. Zero equals um, five three two eight zero zero t minus five eight eight zero zero all over two square root of blah. Okay. Now that looks messy. That looks awful. But in order to make that zero, what do we need to solve? Just the numerator, right? So I'm confident everyone can do that. So it's going to be 58800. Because you can just multiply everything by the denominator, right? Right. Okay. And I can't do that in my head. Can somebody give me a number there? My paper says 0 0.11. I hope that's right. Somebody divide that through for me. Papers is 0 0.11. There's a different way to on the board. That's good. 1, 1, 1. Okay. I might have time to do one of these tomorrow. Okay, I'm not going to take up any homework, but I'm. It looks like the time I can do is probably about three word problems in class. Okay, that's probably what the time I have. The final step says find what the distance is equal to. Can you sub that back into so you distance? sub this back into here? Uh, and it should be as round hope such be zero point one one. So. And I got an answer of. Seven kilometers. Okay. Now, is this a challenging problem? Yes. Okay. Do you need to be awake when you're doing it? Yes. Okay, right? The, this thing that is tricky about this unit, the math isn't super difficult. It's a setup for the questions that are challenging. Okay, so I'd recommend if you want to get started at first time tonight, you may. If you want to look at more questions that are more on that next page, they're not homework. I'm not going to talk about this tomorrow, um, but it probably would hurt for some. Michael, go ahead. Oh, because this is my equation for distance here. Right? So I just started the back of my distance. I just started the back. This is my equation for distance that we had. Yeah. So I just started back in this part. This. Oh, See everybody. Have a good day.